Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Thursday, June 20, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Ecclesiastes 2, reading from verse 1 to 11. And it says, I said in mine heart, Go to now. I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. I said of laughter, it is mad, and of mirth, what doeth it? I sought in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom, and to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men, which they should do under the heavens all the day of their life. I made me great works, I built me houses, I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens of orchids, and I planted trees in them, out of all kind of fruits. I made me pools of water, to water therewith, the wood, the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servant and maidens, and I servant, and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gather me also silver and gold, and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers, and the delights of the sons of men as musical instrument, and that of all sorts. So I was great, and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I keep not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my portion of all my labor. Then I look at all the works that my hand had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Amen. What a word from Solomon this morning. This sound like those of us who seems to be searching for happiness in things. We know the credential and the status of Solomon and his position in society. He was a king, not just any king, but a wise king and a very wealthy king. So he had everything humanly possible that his heart could desire and he listed out a few of them he said that what he will get up and he will drink so he had a lot of alcohol right he he but when he drink he realized that he it only makes him mad it only makes him do stupid things or foolish things so it leads to folly the reading states that he did great things. So he was trying to make himself happy. He was trying to enjoy the works of his hand. And so he built many houses and he planted vineyards and gardens and trees. So he was a very active king. Mind you, his servants are the one that he used to do the work. But you get what I'm saying. And so anything that his heart desired, he got. So there was nothing that was denied to him. And we know when it comes on to women, how he was and how many he had. He had all the gold. He had so much gold and silver. He was richer than any king that was before him in Jerusalem. So he was the richest king that Israel and Jerusalem have ever, ever seen. And remember I said before that he was also wise but i will get to that a little bit later and so he increased more and more and he becomes wealthier and wealthier but then when he comes to his senses and he he could only come to one conclusion and that this all is meaningless it is madness and all it is doing is and all it is, is vanity. 
and vexation of spirit. And he used that word a lot because he understood really what it means. Some of us, we, we are so driven to acquire the wealth of this world. And we do just about anything sometime to get these material possessions. And at the end of the day, we can't see how they add benefit to our existence. Except for the fact that, yes, they might fill a temporary gap. Because that's really what it does. So when you go and you buy a house or you buy a car or you have millions in the bank or whatever. Yes, it might to a point make your life a little bit more manageable because the life that we live the, w the world that we live in it required these things in a sense for us to survive but it's not so much the having these things is the issue it's how our hearts yearn after them like they are more than life itself Solomon is a great example to teach us that these things without God is pointless. And so in your getting, in your pursuit, do not try to look for happiness in material things. There is no happiness. You may have millions in the bank. You may have houses and houses. You may have cars and cars. But just remember that one day these things will be no more. Just remember that you can be here now and the next minute you're gone. And I realize that we are so consumed by the, the idea of wealth and possession that even in death we want to carry these things with us. Or I should say, our loved ones. Because I am noticing a trend that is happening, especially in the Caribbean and other parts of the world. Where, when you go to the cemetery, you see pictures, like they make pictures, I don't know if it's out of foam or something. And put on the grave, they make seats on the graves and they set up the 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 grave or the sepulcher like it is a house in fact i have seen one on the in, on the internet recently where it was literally not even one twice i have seen it on the internet it's it's in the caribbean i don't remember which country if it is jamaica or where but i saw where it was a room a big enough room too they had the guy sitting in a chair the dead guy and he is well decked out in his jewelry and whatever and the big bed beside him the flat screen tv plane and there was a bike in the room and a whole lot of stuff furniture and mind you this was a dead guy so the room is supposedly is grave and I'm like what in the world what is this world coming to that money could have been better spent on the families that are alive or give it to the poor if you don't know what to do but this is the kind of world that we have come to live in where people do not want to part with their material possession and they believe that somehow having a lot of stuff will make them happy. And so they try to get as much as they can. And the sad part about it is that in all they're getting, they never take the time to remember those who do not have. So you end up living a meaningless life because now you have all the money, you have all these material possession but there's no joy in your heart you have become so caught up 
in your own existence, your own wealth, that not even room is there for God. And you can only see where that is going to lead you on a very destructive path. Am I saying that having these things are wrong? No, they are not wrong in and of themselves. But I'm saying the, our attitude towards them and the way we go about acquiring them, it is and it will lead nowhere good fast. That is why whatever it is that we do, when we are pursuing our life's goal, we must make God the center of all of it. Solomon here is telling us he had all of that to his disposal. Women, houses, vineyard. So if, if he was living in our time, he would have skyscrapers, he would have yachts, he would have hotels, he would have cars upon cars, mansions upon mansions. He would be living the lavish lifestyle like many do today. But if you should dive into the person, you realize that they are miserable. And it's like every day they become more haunted because what? they have somehow lost their self in the process and some of these people they become so mean and cruel and greedy and ready eye and bad mind and the list goes on because these things only breed all of these kind of behavior when we are not guided by the influence of the holy spirit and so may we listen to the word of God as it speaks to us this morning. And may we try to understand what the Lord is saying to us. Don't be consumed by things. Instead, allow yourself and your life to be filled with God and the joy that he can offer you. The word of God says, seek ye first. Oh, Seek ye first God, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and then what? He will bless you accordingly. Not bless you so you can glorify yourself, but bless you in such a way that you can in turn become a blessing to the people around you. Amen? So friends, be encouraged. Be wise. Because having knowledge and not making use of that knowledge you are just like an empty barrel tumbling around. So having knowledge does not make you wise. It's all you use that knowledge that actually make you wise. Amen? So God bless you and may God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.